Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Wong, and I'm with Contra Costa County's Employment and Human Services Department. Today, I'll be your moderator, and I'd like to welcome our forum of nine candidates running for three seats, three at-large seats, on the Danville Town Council. Today's forum is sponsored by the Contra Costa County Elections Division, CCTV, and the League of Women Voters of Diablo Valley and West Contra Costa. We're holding this roundtable via Zoom, and we're taping it in the CCTV studios. I also want to mention that many of the candidates' names, as they appear on your screen, also have their campaign email address, and if you'd like, you can contact them there. The candidates for these three open seats are Newell Arnerich, Mohammed El Sherbini, Alan Timmons, Turner F. Stanton, PJ Shelton, Renee Morgan, Nostra Mirzai, Dave Fong, and Kevin Trailer. Now we're begin the forum by asking questions for each person to answer. Each candidate will have one minute, and I'd like to ask all of you to be mindful for the and watch the length of your time and be mindful to your fellow candidates so that we can give our audience and the voters a good opportunity to make an educated vote. So let's begin the questioning. Newell Arnerich, can you tell us how you'd apply your work experience and your background to your position on the town council if elected? Yeah, thanks, Alan. Well, I've been 25 years on the council. It's been five years prior to that on the planning commission, um, five years on design review, went through Leadership Center in Mali, which is kind of a training program to get people into government. I spent two and a half years before I got elected um, learning budgets, how it worked, 42-year business owner um, of several companies and a current business owner of two. Um, my experience is um, based on years of success in building Danville from a financially um, disastrous city into the singularly best-run city in the Bay Area, the most cost-effective city. Um, it's taken a long time and a lot of work to do that. It takes years, to be honest, to learn how to do governance. And um, it does run a little bit like a business, but it has to work no matter what. Through a COVID, through a pandemic, it's got to work at, on all cylinders all the time. It doesn't have the opportunity like a business to stop, lay people off, and reform. So um, I think that's where my experience goes. Thank you, Mr. Arnerich. Mohammed El Sherbini, how would you bring your work experience and background to this seat on the town council? Well, I have been a business owner, a successful business owner for 35 years. And uh, my business, since it was in tourism and hospitality, faced a lot of challenges between budget cut and marketing for better future and better success. So I think uh, because of my business enabled me to have a great wide network worldwide and local, uh, I am able to really focus on bringing balance to the budget and govern or run or be public service uh, for Danville because Danville is beautiful and I think I can do the job based on my expertise that I earned through the 35 years uh, local and international. Thank you, Mr. El Sherbini. Alan Timmons, how would you bring your background and your work experience to this seat? Well, I'm not a politician. I'm a business owner, never have been a politician, never run for any other office except for this one. I own Western Steel and Wire, a company located in San Francisco. Um, we're the largest supplier of wire and wire products in Northern California. Been around for 80 years. So I think like some of the other gentlemen, um, I bring some of that business leadership skills to this position. And I think that that should serve me wisely. Thank you very much, Mr. Timmons, uh, Turner Stanton, uh, if you could tell us about your background and your work experience and how the city would um, benefit from that. Definitely, thank you, Alan, for the question, the time tonight. Uh, my background is I, I'm raised here in Danville, so I've gone through our schools. I know all of our shopkeepers, all of our business owners. So I have a unique background of experiencing this beloved town um, by growing up in it. I went away to college after graduating from San Ramon Valley High School and came back to the town I know. So I have feet on the street experience knowing firsthand what issues our town has. Professionally, 
I worked in the audit practice for one of the top four international professional services firms. So I have that financial acumen to oversee our budgets and carry forward on Danville's fiscal responsibility. Furthermore, I currently serve in the global consulting practice focused on reimagining the customer experience through technology. Our sales tax revenue is down 22%. We need our businesses to think differently and evolve. And that's what I do as a full-time job through strategy and reimagining the customer experience. Thank you, Mr. Stanton. PJ Shelton, how would you bring your background and your work experience to this city seat? Thank you for asking the question, Mr. Wang. I am a 36 year resident in this beautiful town of Danville. I am, I'm much, I, I think I call myself an anomaly because I am a Gemini and I wear many, many hats. I have 30 years of experience in corporate America working in the transportation logistics industry. And most recently, parlayed that experience over to educational, higher education, working with K through 14 and developing career paths for our students. I've also traveled throughout the world in researching and asking the question, what makes a difference for you where you live? What makes a difference for you in your city governance? What makes a difference for you in your educational components? So I am a lifelong learner. And I think what I, I feel what I bring to the table would be a global perspective for the many, many, many immigrants and minorities that are currently living in Danville. And quite frankly, we're moving into a, a different paradigm, a totally different paradigm after COVID-19. And I feel I would best be the candidate to work within that 21st century paradigm. Thank you, Ms. Shelton. Renee Morgan, what would you bring to the table with your work experience and background? Good afternoon, Alan. Thank you for asking that question. Um, I have been with the town of Danville working with them continuously for over 18 years now. I've lived in the community for over 30, um, had businesses in Danville as well as I've raised both my children here. Um, I was elected to the Danville Town Council in 2012 and I served as a mayor in 2016. Um, I also, prior to that, I was on the planning commission for the town of Danville. I also worked with historic design review and heritage resource commissions. So I had the opportunity to really see what makes the town tick. Um, other things that I've been involved in besides just being on commissions and as well as the town council is I have been through leadership San Ramon Valley and leadership Pleasanton. Um, I've also have been a volunteer in police. I've gone through the entire police program just to see how that works and how it um, kind of jives with the rest of the community. And I also sit on numerous executive boards and outreach programs that directly benefit Danville and its residents. All of that is called experience. And it's also called something that we definitely need right now on our town council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Morgan. Nasser Mirzai, tell us about your background and your work experience and how the city town would benefit. Definitely, Alan. Thanks very much. And thanks everybody else for volunteering their time and dedications to make this Danville a better place than we are in. So uh, I am an engineer. I have been an engineer and I studied electronics uh, and um, I have been working in high tech and, and low tech uh, organizations for more than 30 plus years uh, in California mostly. And uh, I have managed budgets on over millions of dollars. I have managed employees of more than hundreds of employees uh, at any given time. Uh, I also have lived through the budget shortfalls and, and the economy turns and such. So what I'm bringing into the table is not only my experience of uh, managing uh, in organizations, managing projects and managing people, but I also have been involved in the technologies and able to vision and, and view the futures that most, uh, most typical citizens are yet to see. The inventions and uh, the technologies that I have been involved and invented are only just surfacing right now, which allows me the capabilities of seeing what to expect and how to plan for the future which is an additional time. I also have been uh, volunteering and working with San Juan Valley School District as a, a legislative committee, and I've been representing this uh, district for more than 10 years in Sacramento, representing our school. 
So those are the uh, criteria that I'm bringing to the table. Thank you, Mr. Mirzai. Dave Fong, what do you bring to the table with your work experience and your background? Good afternoon. Uh, my wife and I have lived and raised our family in the town of Danville for over 43 years and have benefited for all the reasons why we originally moved here besides my job. One, it's a safe community to live and raise a family with best schools. Really uh, looking at the emphasis of the town on preserving open space for the parks and hiking trails and sporting fields. And then probably most importantly, the small town culture, promoting economic vitality and growth of its town businesses and offering enrichment events, activities and programs that promote intellectual and physical growth. My background that sets me apart and qualifies me as one of the best candidates for the seat of uh, in, in the town is one that I am a graduate of UC Berkeley with an econ degree. I have a doctor of pharmacy degree from UCSF. Uh, and most importantly, I have 44 plus years as a senior executive in leadership positions with functional and financial responsibilities and accountability for multi-billion dollar business units within local Fortune 100 companies, Safeway, and Fortune 500 companies, Long's Drug Stores. I've also served in the public and private sector as a governor appointed member of the California State Board of Pharmacy, overseeing the safety of Californians on medication use and distribution. And I'm currently a commissioner and former chair of the Senior Advisory Commission for Danville. And then on, I guess, my spare time, I'm an active member of various academic and healthcare advisory groups and committees addressing healthcare public policy. Thank you, Mr. Fong. Kevin Trailer. What do you bring to the table with your work experience and your background? Thank you, Alan. Uh, in my background, I have over 45 years of collective experience between law enforcement and in the private sector in a multi-billion dollar company dealing with uh, insurance claim and fraud investigations. And this afforded me some unique background of interpersonal relationships and leadership roles, both in a professional standpoint and also in a personal standpoint from a cross-section of different organizations, different government positions, civil, criminal, legal, and ultimately fraternal organizations that have been vital for all the developments that go on in their respective communities. From that, I just established myself as a leader in each of these things, uh, oftentimes uh, moving through ranks and establishing myself as a president or chairman of various organizations, including locally, uh, the Community Against Substance Abuse. I was a surf gal coach, and I had uh, worked for a short period of time on uh, the Transportation Committee, Contra Costa Trans Trans Transportation uh, Association, as an appointee from the town of Danville. Uh, each of these things have afforded me unique insights into people's behaviors, which is where I try to draw the line in what needs to be done in order to motivate and create that working environment where people can do the best work that they can do and to make people feel a part of the solution. And that's where I think we need our help now is my neighbors and friends that live in Danville have told me that they feel like they've been excluded and that there isn't that kind of representation that they would like to have. And I believe that I can, believe, uh, I can bring that to the council and make sure that all voices are heard and that there is inclusion in everything that we do. Thank you very much, Mr. Trailer. Uh, just want to remind everybody to keep it to one minute. Uh, Mr. Arnerich, Newell Arnerich, what would be your number one priority if elected? Well, I, I think it's hard to say, given the COVID um, circumstances we're in, the fire threats and things like that, it's hard to say it's just one thing. Um, COVID is going to be with us um, for more than uh, another nine to 10 months. It's going to affect our lives. We're becoming accustomed to it. Danville citizens have done a great job in responding to um, ways to help slow that spread. Um, we've only had 283 cases um, and two fatalities. But life is changing for us. Um, you know, my kids grew up here. My wife is a teacher, elementary school principal here in San Juan Valley. And that impact of what's going on in our schools right now is probably one of our biggest issues. We have problems with businesses. I have problems with my companies. Um, and we're all learning how to cope. But helping our school district right now is going to be one of the most important things. Because with children at home, most of our families have two working folks. They can't function in their own jobs. They're at financial risk. They're at mental health risk. 
I see it from my work in Discovery Counseling Center and our counselors that are in the schools. We need to help support our schools on a multiple of levels. Um, John Malloy, our new superintendent of schools, needs our help today. We spoke with him on a, on a mental health seminar. He's asking for the community help. My role, my background is there and ready to move forward with the school district. Thank you very much, Mr. Arnrich. Mohammed El Sherbini, what would your number one priority be? Number one priority would be supporting local business to bring more revenue to Danville, the city of Danville, because it seems that we are counting on property taxes. And me being uh, ambassador of Chamber of Commerce for Danville for the, uh, 10 years plus, I saw, I attended a lot of ribbon cuttings, but at the same time, I saw the sadness in some of the small business when they run out of business. Why? Because nobody cared about the small business. So I think I have the energy and being a business owner and successful business, I'll be able to take care of the small business to bring more revenue to town. That will be number one, of course, beside the public health and education and safety, because Danville is a very unique uh, town and city, and it may attract others that they would like to take advantage of uh, Danville. So I will have to look also, also into the safety for Danville. Thank you. Alan Timmons, what's your top priority? I don't have one. I actually have three. You can see this. I call it NTC. Number one, no growth. Number two, transparency. And number three, conservative values. And I'll talk more about those in my closing statement. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Timmons. Turner Stanton, what's your top priority? My top priority, Alan, boils down to our, our platform, which is keeping Danville safe, so safety, community, serving as a conduit for all residents in town. And my top priority, economic vibrance making sure this historic small town we all know and love doesn't recover from COVID, but thrives. Um, I'm zooming in right now live from a downtown restaurant on Hearts Avenue, and there is no path forward to what their holiday season's gonna look like. I think that just cannot be acceptable anymore. We need proactive leadership for our businesses to sit down with the different stakeholders and give them some path forward and some planning so they can be best prepared because the more businesses that close in this town, the more mental health and all over this community. So economic vibrance is my number one priority. Thank you very much, Mr. Stanton. PJ Shelton, what's your number one priority? I'm going to have to echo what many of my colleagues have already uh, shared with you, but for me, safety, the safety policy, as a black female living in the town of Danville and having a black son, the social injustice that is permeating throughout the globe right now is number one for me. I have a son who graduated from Monte Vista High School in the year 2000. For his whole junior and senior year, he was racially profiled coming home to his home in Danville. I thought that it ended, but it has not. I've been in contact with Dr. Ajos, Ajosi, who is the Senior Policy Advisor of Education under Governor Newsom. I've talked to K through 12 superintendents in all of the schools throughout the state. And I do mean the state because I've traveled to Southern California. And that is a major, major concern. Our children of color, black and brown, are suffering. They are suffering in ways that we would not even know unless we actually try to address some of their concerns. Their voices are being silenced. Young black boys are told that they're illiterate and their parents are being called into the schools in our town saying that they needed to get medical help. That is my number one priority. Thank you very much, Ms. Shelton. Renee Morgan, what would your top priority be if reelected? Thank you so much for asking that question. My top priority has been and always will be Danville and its residents. It's very important for all of us to understand that we've all been hit some way or another by this pandemic. 
Um, it's created a immediate and significant financial impact upon all local governments. Um, as a council member, you know, I have had to reassess and reimagine our priorities in a completely new light. Um, our fiscal 2021 forecast tells us to expect a $5 million revenue impact. Um, that's from $37 million to a $32 million impact. Um, we've taken the steps necessary to reduce our expenses and transfers without touching our town reserves. Very important. Uh, the budget in the CIP is remained fluid, and that's really important as well because ongoing, it gives us the opportunity throughout the fiscal year to frequently review and change anything as necessary. Um, these actions also uh, maintain a tight and balanced budget, which is also one of my top priorities. So thank you for asking. Thank you very much, Ms. Morgan. Master Ramirez, I, uh, your top priority. So uh, obviously everyone has uh, similar priorities and, and so is mine, which is the economic vibrance of uh, Danville. However, I would definitely put Danville residents at the top of my priorities because everything else that we all do and we all volunteering to do is for them. So whether it's the economy, whether it is the social justice, whether it is the safe town, whether it is the Danville's uh, small town charms, those are all within protecting and supporting Danville residents. We are their representative. We will be listening to them and we will be uh, supporting their agendas. With that said, uh, a town cannot live without a, a revenue a town cannot live without its uh, potential growth and, and infrastructure that is needed for those growth. Without that, we could not, we could not live in a uh, injustice environment where the, uh, the mixture of Danville has been changing over the years. So social uh, justice must be considered. The, uh, the environments uh, that we live in must be also considered. So those are all uh, coming back into that's our number one priority is Danville residents, Danville as a city. Okay. Thank you. Dave Fong, what's your priority? Yeah, my, my priority is really four, uh, is four prong. Uh, my proven record of accomplishments and experience over the past 43 years, I believe is the foundation that's needed in order to meet both the challenges and be able to deliver success to our business, our community, our schools, and most importantly to our town as we emerge from COVID-19. As we take, as a longtime resident and homeowner, I'm running for the seat so I can devote my energy and focus to represent and serving our community, but making sure that we harness the strengths and the assets invested by the town over the many decades and offer a fresh perspective that builds on the foundation of what has been successful. So now getting more specifically into those four prongs, small business, absolutely, we need to find opportunities to promote economic growth. After all, they're 18% of our sales tax that's, that uh, contributes to our general fund. And therefore, their success is our town's success. Safety, we've got to continue to build on the strength of the partnership between Danville Police and the community to protect the safety of our children, our families, businesses, senior citizens, veterans, and others. And to those that, um, that, that are concerned about fiscal uh, responsibility, we need to ensure long-term fiscal sustainability of balanced budgets, no unfunded liabilities, and strong reserves. This town just doesn't waste money, and we need to continue with that uh, commitment. And finally, how do we continue to invest and protect a very special town? It's small town culture, it's rich enrichment events and activities, and as I mentioned earlier, 43% of our open space for us and future generations to enjoy. After all, our property tax that contributes to the general fund is approximately 60%. So we are very committed, and so am I, on working very closely with our community. Thank you very much, Mr. Fong. Uh, Kevin Trailer, what would be your top priority if elected? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, first off, I'd like to point out that Danville is not a place. It's a community. We're all partners in this community. Uh, all of us have to support one another in the various capacities that we function in, whether it be education, whether it be business, whether it be sports and recreation. These things are all vital to us. And so it's important for me to ensure that we thrive as a community. That's financially, but that's also as a uh, 
vital community that interacts with one another and that they have the support of one another because we all function together in a systemic way. Um, and that's important for our businesses. One of the things that I suggest that we do with the businesses is that we allow for specific training or specific lines of business, both state, federal, and locally, to give them the tools they need to ensure that they have the financial stability that they need going forward. But more important than all of this, I think, is we need to have more inclusion to get more people engaged and involved in what we're doing and educated what processes can be. Thank you very much, Mr. Trailer. As you all know, COVID-19 has devastated our economies, both large and small. Uh, I'd like to know, Mr. Uh, Arnerich, how would you, uh, what are your thoughts on the quarantine and how would you specifically stimulate the local economy in Danville? Well, we have several economies. We have um, the largest software um, incubators. Um, more software companies start here in Danville than any place in the Bay Area. Um, that sector is um, doing well. It's strong and it's healthy. It is entirely just our small local businesses. Obviously, our grocery stores, the Costco, the large businesses, their revenues are up 40 to 50 percent um, and will remain so for some time. So our small local um, vendors are really the challenges there. Um, we have um, people who live here in Danville, a majority don't. We have a very, very, very expensive land base. So rents have gotten very expensive. So one of the things that are actually on three levels we've done, one is meeting with landlords. And I personally have met with most every single major landlord in Danville to talk to them about the alternative that if you don't work at a deal, and if you think as a landlord that you're gonna be untouched by this COVID experience of a huge downturn in the economy, that's not realistic. They need to be a partner with those folks because if they kick them out because they're not gonna pay the rent, they don't have a tenant to back them up. And we have challenges. Some of our, our um, properties owned by investors, they don't care about that. We're focusing on that. And then going business to business, we have an area-wide plan in how to market and rebrand Danville to do different things in lieu of having downtown events, which we can't do right now. Those, that's a big draw. The individual marketing plans, the um, general marketing plans, all of those in working conjunction with both our economic development staff, us as council members, and our chamber members and individuals at each business has been proving that success is there. And some businesses, in spite of how horrible this is, have been very successful. Those lessons were repeating business by business. Thank you very much, Mr. Arner. It's Mohammed El Shabini. Um, what are your thoughts on the quarantine? And specifically, what would you do to stimulate the economy in Danville? Well, as far as the quarantine, I think we should uh, be careful and apply the uh, public health for safety for all our residents. Um, my slogan is Danville first. That's I mean, it's going to be the highest priority, whether it's public health, economic growth or safety or others or open uh, community space. But again, let us face the fact I have been ambassador of the Chamber of Commerce of Danville. I have volunteered and I have funded and I have, I was involved in a lot of events, whether LBGA or, or Wine and Art with the Chamber. And I have seen, and I, I said that earlier in the interview, and I say it again, I have seen a lot of small businesses go out of business from Danville. I seen it, it's facts. One of the reasons which I heard from most of the residents of Danville, why a lot of mom and pop businesses, small business go out of business. Because I see as a business owner and successful business owner worldwide, international and local, that there was no marketing for our small business here. So basically we were depending on the residents to bring revenue to them, success, and bring taxes to the town of Danville. I think that we need to do more. And if I'm elected, I will really bring more business without 
bringing any traffic congestion to the town of Danville. So I will support small business, I will market, and rather than have Danville residents go shop somewhere else or go to other cities nearby for dining or uh, shopping, I will bring the other cities residents to come and shop and dine in Danville. And I will market, for example, we have the museum, we have the Black Hawk Museum, Auto Museum, and we have others. Did we bring revenue from uh, visitors to Danville? No, it's been silent. And it's really hurt me and it's really sad to see all those small businesses that they really work hard and they save their money and they trusted our community to bring them support. And all of a sudden, one year or two years or six months, they're out of business. Is this the way we want for local business for Danville? for our community to bring growth? Of course not. So I will be able, based on my background, to bring more marketing, more business, more revenue. And overall, I'm very proud to say that my twin daughters uh, graduated from Mana Vista, <laughs> and we've been having a great life here in Danville for the last 20 years Thank you. plus. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. El Shabini. And Thank Alan Timmons, uh, your thoughts on the quarantine and how specifically would you uh, get this, the economy in Danville going or maintaining itself? Well, for one, I don't think the government has the right to tell us what to do. I think people are smart enough, they know what to do, whether they want to wear a mask, whether they want to be social distanced, whatever. We need to remove the fear from the people in this community. As far as Danville, I don't know the answer. What I would do is survey the business people and ask them, what can we do? to help you grow? What can we do to help you survive? What can we do to help you get over the, uh, the China virus? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, who are we? Uh, uh, yes, PJ Shelton, uh, your thoughts on this quarantine and what would you specifically do to maintain the economy or, or stimulate the economy? <laughs> maintain and stimulate, huh? Yeah. I am. Um... I am not a politician. I, I am a states person. I, I work for the community in which I live. Um, and I'm very grateful that December of this year, I will be graduating with a PhD in organized managing organized systems, systems design thinking. Our town is a system. Our businesses are systems. They are totally affected by this pandemic. Moving forward, I want to create a podcast. I can't do this by myself. I need to create a podcast, and I want to solicit information from the community, everyone in the community. I want to hear their voice. My platform is, should I win this position as a Danville Town Council? I'm bringing that seat of the community with me. They have a seat at the table with me. Their voices must be heard. My podcast will reach out to them and we'll go from there. Thank you, Ms. Shelton. Renee Morgan, uh, your thoughts on the quarantine and um, what would you do to stimulate the economy in your town? Thank you, Alan, for asking. You know, never before have we ever had to um, quarantine the well and the sick. This has been out, you know, unprecedented time for all of us. And this past year, you know, I've had to reassess and reimagine our priorities in a new light. Everything from our finances to our street closures had to have the best um, outcome for all. Uh, you have to understand that reaching out to our businesses, uh, making ourselves available and continuing to survey and ask and touch base with our businesses to make sure that we are doing the right thing for them has been a definite balancing act, but we've been able to do it. Um, as Danville businesses continue to be hit hard by the pandemic, it's more important than ever um, that we support these small businesses, that we go out and shop at these small businesses. Um, they are the fabric of our community. Uh, to help residents stay connected to our local businesses, the town of Danville has launched a cloud-based digital directory, which allows brick and mortar uh, businesses to showcase their offerings and provide, we have also provided parklets and we've had the opportunity to close down some of the streets in Danville um, to provide outdoor dining and people to offer services. And we're hoping that if we stay at the tier that we're at and we stay at the level that we're at, that by September 29th, we will be able to go to 25% indoor dining and, and space capacity. So that those are my, my reasons. Thank you very much. And uh, Mirzai, Nasser Mirzai, 
uh, your thoughts on the quarantine and uh, what you would do to stimulate the economy. Yes, sir. Uh, so I actually believe that the COVID uh, the impact will not be going away another seven, eight months, and I think it's going to be impacting us for years to come. And, and what I mean by that is not just change of uh, the health issues, but it's just the mindset and the psychology and how we treat and how we work and how we come across each other. So uh, one of the things or a few of the things that I think would help our uh, city and small businesses especially is um, in providing, I think uh, Rene was mentioning about closure some of the streets. I mean, that's, that's a good idea to just get some of the businesses more vibrant and get more people from outside of coming in. Providing maybe a citywide Wi-Fi that the, the uh, outsider, when they come in, they can have a better relaxing time. Providing Panjir when we provide them during the Christmas holidays as a means of people being able to park elsewhere if there's no parking and they just walk downtown and being able to visit and showcase other businesses instead of just driving by. Uh, and I think one of the other uh, candidates mentioned something about training in small businesses. Uh, you know, it's great to have uh, businesses like Safe and Costco, but at the same time, there's a lot of small businesses that they need to learn how to deal with the digital formations technologies, and, and they may not have all the right trainings or all the right tools. And uh, providing them with some of that tools, and some of that ammunitions could help them bring and then prosper from uh, more economy, more vibrant. And, and also uh, schools that also have a play into it. I think uh, some of you guys may know that the enrollments in San Juan Valley is uh, going low, much lower than what it has been so far. And, and they have an actually impact on our school. I was just talking with uh, our new superintendent just last night and uh, ours helping the kids and, and their teachers and their school could also help with some of the small businesses. Thank you. Uh, let's get to Dave Fong. What do you think about this quarantine and uh, what needs to be done to stimulate the economy, Dave? Yeah, thank you, Alan. Uh, I think it all first starts with what are we trying to achieve? What's our strategy? And I believe what we have to focus on as a goal is how do we ensure a positive shopping experience for our consumers that frequent our town? And it starts with looking at our fiscal budget and making sure that we're uh, maintaining those needed services that are absolutely necessary in order to protect the safety of those that shop and also ensure that it, uh, the environment itself is one that's pleasant and positive for uh, the shopper. Now let's get more tactical. Yes, I agree with uh, many of what the candidates have shared on what we could do to market because marketing today is no longer analog, it's digital. So how do you integrate analog and digital? Two, from a resource perspective, are we really, uh, are we, we do not want to be prescriptive with business. That's the reason they have small businesses that they wanna be their own self, their own owner, and they wanna be able to succeed on their own. We can be, however, we can be a resource. We can be an enabler. We can be supportive and we can share best practices that are being developed and implemented in other communities. And then the other piece is optimizing or being able to get more folks locally to spend money. You know, these are tough times. And I totally agree. If you drive down 680, there is a lot of traffic and they go right by us or they're sitting in traffic and don't stop at Danville. We probably have a great opportunity to capture a lot of that traffic and become a way station for those commuters to stop at Danville and really experience what we offer and what we can deliver in way of a reputation for being one of those attractive communities to, to uh, enjoy that uh, shopping experience and that uh, retail experience. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Kevin Trailer, your thoughts on this epidemic, uh, the quarantine, and, and what specifically do you think needs to be done to stimulate the economy in Danville? Extraordinary times. <clears throat> we all talk about it. We all see it. We all experience it. I'd like to personally thank the town of the current council for the work that they've done already in trying to keep these businesses afloat and doing what they can to create a work environment that they can keep the businesses operational. Uh, more than that, though, speaking or elaborating on what I previously stated, I think that each line of business can have specific training that deals with how to 
best use their resources that are available to them, to give them the education to do the online marketing, to give them the education to go to the local government, to the uh, county government, to the state government, to the federal government, to get the kinds of monies that are available to help them through these trying times and to keep them substantial throughout this pandemic event. And once that's done, they will have a greater knowledge base to sustain themselves beyond that. Simple as that. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank our candidates for answering these very important questions. And now each of you will have two minutes to make your closing Alan, statement. Alan, do I have a chance on that one? I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. I, no worries. <laughs> I missed you on there. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, Stanton, uh, Mr. St uh, Stanton, go ahead and uh, answer that question. Um, your thoughts on this COVID-19 pandemic, the quarantine, and, and what specifically do we need to do to uh, stimulate the economy? Absolutely. Thank so April 21st, I wrote into the town the opening task force that first and foremost prioritized safety. Um, and the focus was to be proactive instead of reactive, understanding that even though it's in short, extraordinary circumstances, we can still get our businesses ready to reopen. That effort ultimately turned into a recovered Danville Alliance, where we group different businesses by industry sector, because a restaurant has a very different business plan than a retail store. So I rolled up my sleeves back in April, worked with the council, the chamber of commerce, the county, our business owners, and residents. So I think to really stimulate this economy, we need much more of that public service leadership to really roll up the sleeves. I walked the streets, um, the business directory that has launched, I, I was walking flyers to our business owners to make sure they were plugged in. So as a council member, I think we need to listen more to our business owners because they are the experts of their domain. A restaurant owner, they, they know their bottom lines and what works and what doesn't. So I want to be that conduit to understand how we can further enhance their bottom line. Some ideas I have are launching the Hearts Illumination Project. Our merchants have wanted Hearts Avenue illuminated for years, but they, it has not happened. So I want to look into why not. And with the street closure, when we first closed it, there was no advertising that we were open. It was all about being closed. So I want to change the narrative and mindset to say Danville is the destination and make it really that economically vibrant downtown and local scene throughout all of our business sectors. Thank you, Mr. Stanton, and my apologies for skipping you on that. No worries, Alan. Now thank I'd like you. To, <laughs> sure. And thank you and thank all the candidates for answering these important questions. Now, each of you will have two minutes to make your closing uh, statements, and we'll begin with Kevin Trailer. Kevin. Fellow neighbors, I am running for Danville's town council, seeking constructive change and a fresh perspective from our current representation. The decision to run for this position came after hearing the frustrations and concerns from our residents. I understand that there are demands for more transparency and an open dialogue regarding matters that affect our town. As a 35-year resident, my wife and I have raised two children here. And we've experienced all the changes that have taken place in our community. Danville is our home. And the decisions that we make now have heartfelt effects on our community, our families, and our futures. I know the importance of maintaining the small town way of life and our many unique characteristics. And I also understand the necessity to create and allow for new opportunities for businesses to adapt and thrive in these difficult times. Moving forward cannot be business as usual. I offer new ideas, new insights, and the tenacity to break away from decades of traditional public administration. I'm a retired police officer, a retired insurance investigator, and these positions have allowed me to successfully work in various legal, civil, and government atmospheres. Understanding the challenges needed to succeed in these diverse environments, I have 45 years in my professional life where I've worked under stress and a constraint to achieve positive results while upholding my values of honesty, integrity, and accountability. If elected, I will continue to hold myself and those that I encounter to these same ideals. And with your support, I believe I can foster the change in trans transparency that we all demand. Thank you, Kevin Trailer. Dave Fong, your closing statement. Thank you, Alan. I uh, want to acknowledge and recognize that COVID-19 is changing the way we live, work, and play, and we need to experience council members ready to deliver in the best interest of the community. We take a look, as, you, as everyone takes a look at my list of endorsements, I think what's most important isn't the list of the who's who's, it's the fact that we need people, we need resources, and we need a pulse to what's going on in the community. The individuals that are on my list are my resources, 
are people that I want to listen to and who in turn listen to others that represent their specific areas. Because at the end of the day, we need to first understand by listening. And from what we listen and what we hear and what's recommended, we'll take a look at different opportunities to really uh, demonstrate what we can deliver. With my proven experience in government, community involvement, and really growing businesses by delivering results through collaborative partnerships and effective leadership, and as your council member, together we can continue to build upon the foundation of our town's success and together build an even stronger Danville and solidify our reputation for being one of the most desired communities to live and raise a family. Footnote today, you may have read, we have been, we are now ranked the seventh uh, best or seventh best to retire town in California and number one in quality of life. That is huge. And that's not something that was immediate. It was something that uh, really we invested as a community over many years. We need to harness those strengths and assets of how we delivered on that. And I believe listening to our community, our businesses, our schools, and to anyone who really has an opportunity to contribute, we can just build that stronger Danville for tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Fong. Nasser Mirzai, your closing statement. So first, uh, I wanna appreciate you, Alan, and everybody else at CCTV to organize uh, in this, uh, this partnership and this forum for all of us to speak. Second, I'd like to have uh, everyone to take a look around and see why there are so many candidates running for uh, positions uh, in town. And, and I would argue to say that uh, maybe this opportunity has never shown itself. Maybe there have never been an opportunity for other candidates to step in and actually volunteer and contribute to the success and to the growth of the town. And, and I think we heard that from, probably from Alan more than others many times about transparency. Uh, there are a lot of concerns uh, and, and we hear that loud and clear. We hear that from our neighbors, we hear that in the communities about uh, the things that people want to do, but things are done differently. And uh, you mix that up with COVID-19 and how does, uh, how does that impact uh, our uh, uh, economies and our town and our relations going forward? Requires someone that has that uh, passion, uh, has that interest, and wants to serve the community. No other agenda is more than serving the community, make, making this town a better town. Um, as I mentioned before in my uh, previous uh, statements, uh, the economy vibrant of Danville is important to keep us alive and keep us going forward. Social justice is critical. I don't think we have faced that before, and we need to manage that. The environment control is something we need to also manage and, and control, and we need to contribute to that. And at the same time, we need to maintain our Danville as a small town. We need to make sure that it's safe as it has been. But those are not looking in the past, but instead looking at the future. And we can- Thank you, Mr. Mayor Zai. Thank you. Uh, Renee Morgan. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to speak today. You know, Danville has been my home. I have lived in Danville for over 30 years. I've raised my two children here and I've owned a business in Danville. I was elected to the town council in 2012 and I served as your mayor in 2016. Prior to being elected to the town council, I served for eight years as a planning commissioner, a heritage resource commissioner and on historic design review. During my eight years of leadership on the town council, we have made significant progress in many areas. And I'm proud to say that Danville is consistently ranked in the 20 top places to live and the safest city in the state of California for the past three years. This is what we mean when we say an outstanding quality of life. I will continue to preserve everything great about Danville. We approach, my approach has always been hands-on and proactive. My experience leadership is not only important at a local level, but also at a regional level where established relationships are imperative. This requires leadership, taking action, and getting results. This past year, I have reassessed and reimagined our priorities in a new light. Everything from our finances to our street closures had to be balanced to provide the best outcome for all. 
But despite deep uncertainty, I have been able to pivot and use this time to retool conventional thinking and decision-making, opening the door to a more transformative, transformative change and a more resilient future. Being called on to devise a recovery strategy is not easy, and it opens the doors for our economy. It sustains our future reserves, and it maintains the safety and protects lives, all things that Danville was built on. I have faced these challenges head on, and I've continued my efforts to find ways to not only help Danville today, but ensure residents and businesses will thrive moving forward. We are stronger together. That is why I believe in an open door policy. I am honored to serve as your Danville Town Council member and your mayor. And I graciously ask for your support and your vote for my reelection. Let's do this together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. PJ Shelton. Thank you, Alan. And again, my thanks to the Contra Costa TV and the Contra Costa Elections Division, and of course, the League of Women Voters. I am PJ Shelton. Once again, I'm not a politician, but I am a statesperson. Politicians, many of them may say or do anything to get elected. But as a statesperson, I am working for the common good of my community and the people I will represent. I've been a resident of Danville for 36 years. My son graduating from Monta Vista High School in the new millennium, 2000. But as this year ends, December 31st, 2020, the world as we know it has changed dramatically. A new story for our town is about to begin. We are living in changing times. The, these are a few of the headlines that I've taken from our local newspaper. Local businesses hoping to open again, throw in towel. California bill, put people of color on company boards or pay a fine. Dealing with COVID-15, what, what are we missing about this? Smoky air improves, but still at unhealthy levels. Racial injustice continues. Sports teams playing to empty seats filled with cutouts. Parents ask, are schools COVID safe for my children? We are living in changing times. Parents as teachers, teachers as law enforcers, law enforcers as mental health professionals. As a candidate for town council, I recognize there would be many new, many new issues to acknowledge and work through with our community. I am the representation for the entire community of Danville. You will have a seat at the table. I am PJ Shelton asking you to vote for me for Danville Town Council. Thank you very much. Turner F. Stanton. Thank you, Alan, and thanks to all of you for watching this replay. This election is for the future of Danville. Being raised in Danville and a proud graduate of San Ramon Valley High School, I love this town and decided I could not sit out this November and watch Danville's future be put at risk. We have heard time and again, Danville didn't happen by chance. It was carefully planned. However, I am deeply concerned that we have reached the end of our careful planning and there's no continuity plan in place for the next generation. I am further concerned that in order for Danville to not only recover, but thrive, we need proactive and dedicated leadership with a new mindset that supports all members of the community, from businesses, families, seniors, and our veterans. I want to bring desperately needed change to the Danville Town Council by bringing fresh solutions to tired problems and by engaging with groups of this community that for far too long have been left behind, forgotten, taken for granted or unanswered. If we do not elect new, vibrant, qualified leadership that has feet on the street experience and a genuine love for Danville, we risk losing the historic town we all know and love. I have over a decade of transferable leadership experience by being a voting member for three years on the Parks Commission, rolling my sleeves up for economic development, serving as co-chair for the Recovered Danville Alliance and volunteering at countless Cornerstone community events. Professionally, I work in the audit practice for one of the top four international professional services firms, providing me the financial acumen for fiscal responsibility. Currently, I work for the same top firm focused on strategy and reimagining the customer experience through technology. As our businesses and government need to think differently, this is what I do for a living. 
business as usual will not cut it. It's time for the next generation of leaders to carry the legacy forward and secure Danville's future. Stand with Stanton and vote Turner Stanton to bring change to the Danville Town Council. Learn more at stantonfordanville.com and connect with us on social media. Thank you very much. Alan Timmons. Yes, thank you, Alan. Um, my name is Alan Timmons and I am running for Council of Danville. I grew up in the Midwest, specifically Ohio. I'm a fourth generation American. I served in the United States Air Force for six years. I have a BS in engineering, an MBA, and a PhD. I'm married with five girls. I'm the owner of Western Steel and Wire, the largest wire and wire supplier in Northern California. We've been around for 80 years. It's located in San Francisco. Because of that fact, I have no special interest tied to Danville. I can't be influenced other than the fact that I want Danville to be the greatest place on earth to live. I have three platforms that I'm running on. NTC, no growth, transparency, and conservative values. No growth. We live in a wonderful place. Lots of trees, beautiful hillsides. Why do we want to mess it up? Every time I'm leaving San Francisco, I look up at Oakland. Berkeley, do we want to look like that? I go down 580 East. I look over to the left, see Dublin. It's nothing but a big blob of houses. Is that how we want Danville to be? I don't think so. I even look at what's happened in Danville. We're building 144 apartment complexes right in downtown Danville. How did that ever happen? Who approved that? And it's even for low interest, uh, low income people. Transparency. I want the people of Danville to have a voice in what's coming across the council. They need to give us direction. What do they want? It's not up to the council. It's up to the people of Danville. How we make that happen, I'll have to come up with a plan. Maybe it's a question of hiring a, uh, a communication officer and she gets all the registered voters and we send out emails every month and we say, hey, here's the things in front of the council. How do you feel? You know, what? How would you vote on this? Maybe we can even eliminate the council. We get people to actually provide some input. But mostly I'm running as a conservative voice. I want to be the conservative voice of the council. And people ask me, what is a conservative? I always say, look, Watch CNN, watch Fox News. If you find yourself supporting Fox News, you're probably a conservative. Thank you. Mohammed El Shabini. Hi. Okay. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for uh, taking care of this forum. I want to thank Contra Costa County Election and Contra Costa County TV, League of Women Voters of Diablo Valley, League of Women Voters of West Contra Costa County. Um, I look into everyone and I say I respect all the candidates, but I think I have more to bring to the anvil more than they must do respect. I have the vision, then I think outside the box. I have been living here for 20 years plus. I raised my beautiful twin daughters, whom they graduated from Mana Vista, and they were honored by the Rotary Club for a lot of charity and a lot of good works they have done. And they graduated from Davis and they have master degrees. And so I have a beautiful family, my wife and my twin daughters that I'm proud of. And of course, coming from uh, Egypt, I was born in Egypt and I came here and I've been running my business since 1987. It has been successful. I had a lot of challenges because again, as I mentioned, my business into the tourism, travel and hospitality. So I had a lot of challenges. So I was able to, uh, able to maneuver all this budget cut and uh, have a better marketing to keep the business successful. Being ambassador of Danville Chamber of Commerce, I have seen the neglect of the small business. I have seen some of the small business failure to be in Danville. I think I will be the one to bring more marketing to Danville uh, local businesses. Why our business should go to San Francisco or Napa Valley and other places? Why should we go to Walnut Creek and other cities? I think we can keep the money in, in Danville. We have a beautiful restaurants. We have a beautiful recreational parks and people can come and spend the money here without the compromise of safety or traffic congestion here in Danville. So I have that vision. And again, uh, I have been uh, serving with honor at the Chamber of Commerce. I have uh, 
Thank you, Mr. El Shabani. Thank you. Newell Arnerich. Thank you. I'm Newell Arnerich, six-term mayor, council member of Danville. Thank you to the Contra Costa elections and illegal women's voters for presenting this opportunity and for your dedication to getting out the vote and participating in local governments. My focus has been on maintaining our small town atmosphere and our outstanding quality of life. Danville did not happen by accident. It was carefully planned with a clear vision on pres preservation of our heritage, support of our local businesses, special events that help bring people to Danville, and keeping Danville in regional leadership roles. Since the downturn of the economy on March 17th, I've been focused on changing how Danville does business, asking businesses through our sh local shop Danville programs, providing technical assistance to businesses to develop individual and group marketing plans, and we have succeeded together by staying focused on our local successes along with regional partnerships that benefit Danville. But let me be clear. I have kept Danville debt-free for 25 years with a balanced budget and significant reserves. Danville is the most cost-effective city in the area by 100 to 300% with no unfunded liabilities and the safest community in California for the past four years. As a current business owner for the past 42 years, I do understand what it takes to get up every day, sell your services, and the challenges of working 12 hours a day, six to seven days a week, and at the same time, making a difference in my community. I've worked tirelessly with our chamber, nonprofits, our local businesses, one-on-one -on -one, to make Danville a successful place to do business. Thank you to everybody who's been part of Danville's great history. I'm proud to have helped maintain Danville's character and high standards in governance. It is my honor to be a small part in continuing that business. If you want to keep Danville safe and a wonderful place to live, I ask you for your vote on November 3rd. Thank you very much. And that concludes our forum of candidates running for Danville Town Council on November 3rd. Once again, our candidates are Kevin Trailer, Dave Fong, Nasser Mirzai, Renee Morgan, P.J. Shelton, Turner F. Stanton, Alan Timmons, Mohammed El Sherbini, and Newell Arnerich. For more information on the candidates, visit votersedge.org. The elections division has set up a multiple drop-off box, multiple drop-off boxes for ballots around the county. And for the one nearest you, you can visit www cocovote.us, or you can call the elections office at 925-335-7800. The deadline to register for this election is October 19th, so please don't forget to vote on November 3rd. My name is Alan Wong. Thank you for our candidates for being here, and thank you for watching. Go out and vote. Good job, Alan.